Hello Crafty Family and welcome to another tutorial by She's So Crafty. For today's DIY project, we'll be creating five Christmas and holiday themed DIYs to decorate your home. Now these decor items have a combination of traditional and farmhouse styles and they're sure to make your space feel warm and cozy. Now these are all easy to make and I provide step-by-step -step detailed instructions to help you create your own beautiful pieces. Now I provided the list of supplies and tools used to make these projects in the description box below. Now I'm so excited to share this tutorial with you, but before we start, I wanted to say hey, hey, and welcome back to my amazing subscribers and visitors to my channel. Now if you are a new visitor to my channel today and you love to create fun and easy DIY projects on a budget, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also click that notification bell so you will be the first to know when a new DIY tutorial is ready to share with you. So now, let's just jump right into these projects. Now the first project is a red truck themed wall decor piece. Now for this project, we'll start with one package of these tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree, these window clings from Dollar General, a piece of foam board from the Dollar Tree, and also some buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Now the first thing I'm going to do is lay out my Surebonder silicone mat and I'm going to grab my tumbling blocks. Now I've gone ahead and stained a bunch of them ahead of time with my Jacobian wax uh, uh, stain by Memwax. So now what we're going to do is make our frames and I will be joining three blocks together. Now using your straight edge you want to join the three blocks together with your hot glue and we'll be making a total of 12 sets. Now these 12 sets will be able to create three frames. So now I'm going to take my carpenter square that I also purchased from the Dollar Tree and I'll use this to line up my frame to keep it nice and square. Now I'll be adhering the sections by sandwiching the two sides in between the two tops as demonstrated here. Now you do want to make sure as you adhere these together, you want to wipe away any glue that oozes out of the seams for a nice clean finish. And once your frame is done, just repeat this for your other two frames. So now you want to grab your cutting mat and your foam board. Now you want to place your frames right on top. And what you're going to do is trace the outside of the frames onto the foam board with a pencil. Now once they're all traced, you want to grab your ruler and your X-Acto knife and you want to cut each one of those pieces out. And now we can add the foam board cutouts to the frames. Now you just want to add some hot glue to the back of the frame and then you want to carefully place it, place that foam board right on top. And here are all of the frames completed. So now we can grab our window clings. Now we will be applying the clings with this matte Mod Podge I picked up from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to take the first one which is the tree and the deer piece and I'm going to apply a thin layer of Mod Podge to the back of the cling. And then I want to carefully place it in the center of the frame and I want to smooth it out from the center out. Now this is sure to remove all of your bubbles. Now then we want to do the same with the fox and the truck clings. And here are all three pictures with the clings applied. So now I want to just add a few snowflakes to the pictures as well and I'm going to do this the same way with the Mod Podge. And now your pictures are all complete and you can display them just like this, but I'll show you how to have them in a hanging vertical display. So I'm going to be using a piece of buffalo check ribbon from the Dollar Tree to hang these. And I'm going to start by applying some hot glue to the end of the ribbon and place and center the deer photo right on top at the very end. Then just flip it over and add a bit of that hot glue to the back for some added security. 
Now I'll be using an extra tumbling block as a spacer between my frames. And once you have that space, just apply more hot glue and then apply that truck picture into place. And then you want to finish with the box picture on top of that one. Now at the very top, you just want to fold the ribbon down to make a loop and secure the back into place with hot glue. Now since these window clings have a little bit of a shine, I'm just going to add a little bit of that matte Mod Podge on top of each cling to tone it down just a little. Now then to finish it off, I was going to add a bow, but instead I decided to add an embellishment of pine and berry. So I'm going to start by taking a few of some garland ties and I'm going to twist them together forming a little bundle. Now in order to make sure it lays flat, I'm just going to give the back of them a little bit of a shave and then I'm just going to apply a generous amount of hot glue to the back and press it onto that top ribbon loop. And then I'm going to take two small pine cones and I want to add them to the top of the garland. And then I'm going to finish off with a cluster of berries. And now this piece is finished and ready to hang. And here is that completed project. Now I think this turned out super cute. Now this piece is perfect for those narrow spaces in your home that just need a little bit of spicing up. And this little touch of pine and berries really tops it off perfectly. Now whether you choose to hang it vertically or place these individually, it'll be super cute to add to your holiday decor. Now the second project is a removable pillow cover. Now for this project, I'll be using this placemat from the Dollar Tree and I'll be using a youth size, medium or large t-shirt in any color that you like. And this was also from the Dollar Tree. Now the first thing we're going to do is to lay out that t-shirt and we want to make sure that it is nice and smooth and that the bottom hem of the t-shirt is nice and even. And then remove that packaging from the placemat and you want to lay it on top of the t-shirt, making sure that about a third of the placemat is hanging off the edge of the t-shirt. And then you want to take your scissors and you want to cut the t-shirt around the placemat as shown. So now we'll have two pieces for the back. Now we can assemble our cover and what we want to do is lay the placemat down with the print facing you and you want to remove all of those tags. Now remove the tags from the t-shirt as well. So our t-shirts will have a cut edge and a hemmed edge. Now we want to take one of the pieces and we want to lay it down on top of the placemat with the good side facing down and the hemmed edge towards the center. So now I'm going to sew my pillow, but if you wish to glue your pillow, I recommend using this Fabri-Tac fabric glue that is washable and you can simply apply a bead around the edge in between those two layers. Now, if you would rather hot glue, I recommend these fabric glue sticks by Surebonder since it is also washable. Now you could apply this the same way. And once you apply this, you would just press it into place with your hands. And then what you would do is take your second cut piece and you would lay it good side down also with the hem facing the center. And you wanna overlap the first piece and then apply the glue of your choice just like the first time. Now, if you are sewing your pillow like me, this is how I would just lay out the two loose pieces. And what you wanna do is you just wanna go around and secure it with clips or pins. And then you wanna take it to your machine and stitch it all the way around. And here is my pillow cover all stitched together. Now, if you glued, you wanna make sure it's completely dry before you flip it right side out. Now you can also clip the corners on the inside as well to make your corners nice and sharp when you flip it right side out.
And once it's all flipped, all you have to do now is to take your pillow form insert and place it into the cover. Now I made this by splitting a Dollar General pillow in half and I'll link the tutorial up at the top and in the description box on how I did this. Now once your pillow form is nice and inserted, you just want to fluff it out, smooth out the back, and your pillow is ready to display. Now I made a second one and here are the pair. I just love these easy pillow covers. Now these are so festive and easy to make and plus they really do look high end. Now I think the best thing about this is that you don't have a trillion stuffed pillows to store. You just pull off the cover and tuck it away into next year. That makes them perfect. Now the third project is a corrugated metal look joy sign. Now for this project we'll start with one package of these five gallon paint stir sticks that were 98 cents from Lowe's, a piece of this foam board from the Dollar Tree, some of this Hallmark wrapping paper that I got from the Dollar Tree, and some white poster board from the Dollar Tree to create this metal sheet. Now the first thing we're going to do is to take our five gallon paint stir sticks in the package and we want to cut off that curved edge. Now this will make them about 17 inches long. So now go ahead and open up your paint sticks and take one of them out and you want to cut that one in half and make sure the two sections are equal. So now that your pieces are cut, we can proceed with staining and I will be using this Jacobian stain by Minwax. So just go ahead and protect your work surface and you want to apply your stain on both sides and the ends of each stick. And then you want to repeat this for each of the remaining sticks. Now when those are dry, we can just go ahead and just start working on our letters until they're done. So I printed out this word joy in the Cooper black font in size 600 in Microsoft Word. And I'll also be using this galvanized metal looking sheet that I created by spray painting poster board and dabbing it with a paper towel. And I'll link that up in the right hand corner so you'll see the full tutorial on how I did it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our printed letters and we want to tape them face down on the back of that poster board. And then we can use an embossing tool or ballpoint pen and trace around those, the printed outline of the letters. And this will transfer some of that printed ink onto the back of the poster board. And then remove that sheet and we can repeat this for the other letters. And as you can see, the letter is lightly transferred onto the back so we can easily trace it out. So now all of our letters have been transferred onto the poster board. And now we can cut out our letters. So to make the best cuts, I recommend using an X-Acto knife. Now, what you wanna do is just carefully cut around each of the letters. And here are all of the letters cut out. Um, the Y looks great and then if you look at all of the letters, they look fantastic, perfect. Now in the metal tutorial, I made embossed lines to make even folds. So now we can go ahead and just fan fold those lines on our letters and here's what they will look like. Now, once they're all done, just set those to the side. So now our wood should be dry and we can make our frame. So you wanna lay out the pieces so the printed side is on the inside and facing the bottom of the frame. So I'm gonna adhere the pieces with hot glue. This is just a temporary hold. And what we're going to do is we're just gonna apply hot glue to the inside piece. And we're gonna be sandwiching those small pieces in between the two larger pieces. Now, once the frame is all assembled, we're gonna be reinforcing the sides with nails. And I'll be using these half inch wire nails to do this. So I'm gonna turn the frame up on its side and I'm gonna use these needle nose pliers to hold those small nails while I nail them in with my hammer. Now you wanna make two nails um, into each of the sides. So 
So now just grab your foam board and you want to place your frame right on top of it. Now for this piece, we're going to be tracing the inside of the frame onto the foam board. And then you want to grab your cutting mat and you want to use your ruler and your X-Acto knife to cut out that piece. So now that your piece is all nice and cut out, you can cover it. Now I'll be using this red and black check wrapping paper that I got from the Dollar Tree. Or you could just use scrapbook if you like. Now I'm just going to place that foam board on the inside and I want to fold the overhang over to the back side of that foam board and secure it in place with some hot glue. And as you adhere it together, you just want to trim as needed as you go. Now once that wrapping paper is all secure, I am going to go ahead and cover the back to finish it off for a nice clean look. And I'm just going to run a bead of hot glue around the edge and adhere it to the back. So now that that's done, we can add our letters. Now you're just going to place them and center them as best as you can. I'm kind of using a ruler as a guide. Just apply some hot glue to the back of the letters where the folds contact the board and then Place them into place. And here they all are applied. So now I'm just going to grab the frame and we want to make sure that the measurements are on the bottom. So I'm going to take six loose tumbling blocks and I'm going to use them to support our board when we insert it. And I'm just going to place the blocks inside the frame as shown here. And then I'm going to apply hot glue to one side of the block and secure them around the inside of the frame. Now once those are all dry, we can insert our sign into the frame. Now it should fit snug, so there's no need to glue it into place. Now as an option, I'm going to add some leaves and berries to the top corner of my frame. And I'm just going to add it using hot glue. I have a few loose berries and some leaves and I'm just going to put leaves and berries in each corner. You can choose whatever you like or you can just keep it simple. And here is my joy sign on display. I just love how this project turned out. Now you would never know that these letters were made from poster board. And adding a few touches finish off the looks and it makes it ready for the holidays. Let me know what you think about this project in the comments below. Now the fourth project is a farm trees framed box top. For this project, we'll be using one of these lids from a box from the Dollar Tree. We'll also need some tumbling tower blocks and I went ahead and stained some with my Jacobian stain by Mimwax. So what we're gonna do is adhere the blocks together in sets of four and I'm going to make four four block sets. Now you do wanna make sure you use a straight edge to adhere your blocks together because you want them to be nice and even.
Now once you have your four strips ready, you just go ahead and use a carpenter square to bond these together. You just want to make sure that you do sandwich the side pieces in between the top and bottom pieces. And then you can just go ahead and set the frame to the side and grab the lid of the box. Now the first thing you want to do is to take your X-Acto knife and you want to cut the corners so the box will lay flat. And then you want to just grab your frame and you want to determine how you're going to trim the edges off to fit your frame. Now in order for my my uh, box lid to lay completely fat, plat, bleh, <laughs> flat, I'm just going to run the side of a marker along the seam to flatten it out. So then um, what I'm going to do is just trim off the top and bottom and you can see that that is flush with one of the edges. And then we're going to trim off about a quarter of an inch off each side. So then I'm going to take the frame and apply a bead of hot glue to the back and then adhere it to the top of the box lid cutout. Just press that into place and there you go. It is that simple. Now this is a simple but cute framed picture for your holiday farmhouse decor. Now this picture was displayed on a shelf in my last DIY and I received a lot of questions about it so I decided to throw it in this tutorial to add it as a bonus. Now Dollar Tree has even more cute designs that you can frame so give them all a try and have fun making these quick and easy pieces. Now the fifth project is a Christmas tree stocking holder. Now for this project, we'll start with one of these beware signs on the Dollar Tree, or you can use a Christmas or fall sign as well. We'll need some of these wood Christmas trees from the Dollar Tree, and some of these silver hooks from the Dollar Tree. Now the first thing we're going to do is to take the board and go ahead and remove all the tags and the hang strings. Now you can sand the glitter off the letters if you like, but this piece wasn't too bad. So what we're going to do now is we are going to be painting our board. Now I'll be using this chalk paint for this project. So I'm just going to apply some of that paint to the board and I want to spread it evenly making sure that you cover those edges as well. And then sit this to the side to completely dry. So now we can work on our trees. Now I will be using four of the wood trees from this package. Now I'll be using some Mod Podge to apply scrapbook paper to my trees. Now I'm going to start by applying Mod Podge to each one of my wood trees. And then what I want to do is apply those trees to the back of the scrapbook paper pieces. Now once all of your trees are applied, you want to take your X-Acto knife and you want to trim off all of the excess scrap paper off of that wood tree. And then just repeat this for the rest of your trees and here they are. Now I'm going to trim each tree in black with a sharpie just to help it stand out a little better. And then just set these to the side. So now my board should be dry and I'm going to use some of this antique wax to create a wood look. 
Now the first thing I want to do is to mark the center line of the board and I'm going to mark it with a ruler. And then I'm going to take a piece of painter's tape and what I want to do is apply it along that center line we made. And then using a chip brush, what I want to do is apply that antique wax on the board in straight strokes in one section. Now once you um, apply a little bit, you can go ahead and add some texture by making some wavy strokes or circles if you like. Now after you apply it, you want to let it dry a few minutes and then you can remove your painter's tape. Now this will create your first plank. And then you can go ahead and apply that antique wax for your second plank. And once all applied, you just want to let it completely dry. So now that it is dry, we can go ahead and add our trees and our hooks. Now I want to lay the four trees out evenly and you want to make sure that the top star is just peeking right over that top edge of the board. And then I'm going to use hot glue to apply each one of my trees into place. And now that our, our trees are all done, we can add our hooks. Now these are three pound hooks from the Dollar Trees, but I'm just gonna peel off this sticker and I wanna apply some hot glue into that small open area underneath the sticker just to add a little bit of bonding security to the hook. I'm gonna apply one hook under each one of my trees. Now at the last minute, I decided to add some of these Dollar Tree snowflakes. Now these are the clear glittery ones, but I'm going to quickly spray paint them white. Now once they do dry, I'm just going to apply one in between each one of the hooks and I'm just going to apply hot glue into the center. So once everything is nice and dry, we can flip it over and finish off the back. Now I'm gonna be using this craft paper to cover it. So I'm just gonna start off by adding a bead of hot glue around the back edge of the board. And then apply that craft paper right on top. And now we're gonna take our X-Acto knife and just trim off all of that excess craft paper. Now to hang this, we're gonna use two pieces of this nautical rope on the back of the board. And we're gonna form each one of the pieces into a loop shape. Now, in order to make the bond just a little bit better, I want to apply it directly to the board. So I'm just gonna remove a small area of that craft paper where I want the rope to be bonded to the board. And then just apply hot glue to that exposed area and place that rope piece into place. Then just apply a little bit more hot glue over the rope ends for a little added extra security. And then repeat this on the other side and let it dry completely and you are ready to hang up your board. And check it out, your stockings are ready and you have a cute little hanging spot for your decor. Now I really love how the wood look turned out and it really makes it look rich. And all of the embellishments really bring out holiday cheer. I just love it. Now I always have a hard time picking a favorite, but let me know which one of these comments was your favorite today. Listen, if you love DIYs on a budget, give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. Make sure that you're following She's So Craft DEE on Facebook for the latest new sneak peeks and giveaways. Thank you so much for visiting and checking out my tutorial today. 
If you like videos like these and you don't want to miss the next one, make sure you're subscribed by clicking that subscribe button below and turning on that notification bell. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.